Department of the Art Studios. This is your Ashland University Eagle News Update. I'm Logan Gay. And I'm Zach Cobb. Thanks for joining us. The College of Arts and Sciences hosted another symposium against indifference event last night, spotlighting the documentary, The Life I Got to Live. It became a much more uh, collective project, so a lot of people were very kind of invested in having the story told. Mm -hmm. So then it became a collaborative process and a lot of us worked on it. Human rights, I think, is something that is important to everyone. So that she's trying to like spread the word and like really um, have people do something like that, I think is really awesome that she's able to do that. But everything that I, I did with that particular film, because it was such a personal story, was done you know, intentionally. Dr. Veronica Barrera is a former Washington State professor and was the speaker at this event. She showed her documentary and explained the choices that she had to make in production process. The documentary was based off of memories that she and her mother had from the 1973 Chilean coup, where many people were imprisoned and killed, including her father. The event was open to the public and was held in the Student Center on the AU campus. The next CAS Symposium event will be on April 5th in the Rock Lecture Hall discussing the intersection of coffee, communities, and conservation in Latin America. Ashland University is expecting its largest, largest incoming class ever this fall, but accepted students still have a lot to process before stepping onto campus. AUTV 20's Kevin Stoikovi has the story. Just because a student is accepted to Ashland University doesn't mean they will attend. Programs like this VIP event are used to help make their decision final. This is that first major decision they've ever made in their lives. They're also hitting that reality of, wow, I'm leaving, possibly leaving the nest. I'm leaving my friends. I'm starting over a new chapter in my life. So it can be really stressful for a lot of students. High school seniors look for certain characteristics in schools to aid them in their college decision. I've obviously studied like for broadcasting. I've done newspaper. This is my second year at the school for high school doing it. Um, I've tried to look at more colleges to like study and see what else I have to do to get up to the level of being in college. I was looking for um, quality education, I'd say. I, I enjoy working one-on-one -on -one with my professors and whatnot, and that's what I was looking for. I wanted the individual attention. High school students can gain valuable experience by visiting the schools they want to attend. Ashland's VIP event offers campus tours, among other things, to prepare them for school. Well, this is what we call a yield event, and so this is that chance for accepted students to really make that connection with the institution, whether it's their professors, other students, um, other optional programs that really give them the chance to uh, buy into the institution. General feedback from the on-campus experience has left potential incoming freshmen excited for what's next. I liked it a lot. This is my second time coming, so I think it helped me more narrow down my colleges to pick from. I just wanted to get right into it and, um, you know, get my internships, get my degree, work with my professors, work with my uh, uh, students and whatnot. It, it's just extremely exciting, and I can't wait to be here in six months. For AUTV 20, I'm Kevin Stachowicz. With many more students on campus next semester, dining services is going to have to make some changes if they expect students to stay on campus to eat. AUTV 20's Zach Lemon has the story. Finding times to eat on campus can be challenging. Even with the 240 block plan, there are times where no on-campus dining options are open. You have to go off campus, spend your own money when you already spend well over $2,000 for a meal plan, and it also just drives away from campus, which diverts the student life and kind of puts a damper on the whole experience. Next year, the problem will get even worse. All freshmen will be required to purchase the unlimited meal plan. This forces students off campus for late night food on the weekend. I usually just talk to friends who are also, who also realize that and who aren't going home that weekend and usually we just go out and get something to eat. Increased students at Convo during major meal times is a concern for upperclassmen. The dining services believes they can handle it. I can't, I actually just can't imagine how busy Convo is going to be at noon. There is increased lines but we can handle far more than what we're doing now which is roughly six to seven hundred for lunch um, and roughly eight hundred for dinner so our capacity to serve uh, more people is, is there. Although Convo appears ready to handle the increase they still lack the weekend late night hours of Eagle's Nest. I mean if it, if it is an issue um, they can always you know uh, 
acquire some eagle dollars and if, um, if they need to, they can always go um, to the eagle's nest and, and purchase additional meals. Changes will go into effect next fall with no further adjustments. Reporting for AU TV 20, I'm Zach Lemon. Ashland University students are taking a unique approach when it comes to learning about and stopping bullying. Our goal with Sticks and Stones is to help students figure out how they can handle a bully. If we can help one student stand up to a bully or even just not have as bad of an experience with a bully, then we have accomplished our job. I think it's really, really important because the scripts are uh, designed for certain age groups. Sticks and Stones is a really good club and I feel we really need people to come out and support us and also join and do the same thing what we do at schools, come help us in, uh, in the skits and just just promote anti-bullying because everyone goes through it. It's the littlest things, we don't really notice it at all and we just need people to help support us. Sticks and Stones demonstrates bullying scenarios through theatrical presentations. This group was formed by peers who have all been bullied in the past and wanted to help others. Sticks and Stones meets Tuesdays in the library lecture room at 7 p.m. Some of the men of AU shredded their stuff for a good cause last Wednesday night. AU TV's 20 Zach Linda Smith has the story. Pretty much one of the <laughs> most fun fundraisers I can imagine. This year's Alpha Fees Mr. University pageant had 16 contestants, all chosen by their peers. What we do is we send out emails to different organizations and we ask them to nominate a man of their choice. They can be in the organization or just somebody that they feel upholds their values. After the personality, talent, and question rounds, the judges crowned Jake Miller with the title of Mr. University. Um, I'm happy to contribute any way that I can to such a phenomenal cause, women's cardiac care, um, any way that I can help. Jake and the other contestants helped to raise just under $1,800. This was the 7th annual Mr. University pageant held at the university. Every year, the money raised is donated to the Alpha Phi Foundation, one of the sorority's main philanthropies. Um, we have our own foundation, the Alpha Phi Foundation, which um, people always think we're helping ourselves out, which is true because we do give scholarships to sisters in need, but it also goes to um, helping support and research women's cardiac care. While some of the contestants were disappointed that they lost, they can be proud that they helped raise so much money for a great cause. Even though I didn't get first place, it was, it was kind of disappointing, but I'm glad I got second place. Like, how amazing is that? And I'm definitely going to be here next year, definitely. Reporting for AUTV 20, I'm Zach Lindesmith. With class registration quickly approaching, questions are arising about what classes to take next fall. This week, we asked students what their favorite class has been at AU in hopes of helping people create a course schedule that works for them. My favorite class is Historical Geology with Dr. Brush. My favorite class at Ashland so far is Enter to Teaching and Technologies by Jason Ellis. My favorite class is Concert Band. My favorite class at AU so far has been um, actually Sports Globalization with uh, Ken Brubaker. My favorite class thus far is American History with Professor Campbell. Um, I would say that it had to be Campaigns and Elections with Dr. Campbell. My favorite class at AU so far is Biology with Professor Taz. My favorite class is Drawing with Keith Dahl. For more Ashland University news and sports, don't, don't forget to check out the Collegian at www.ashlandcollegian.com and the new WRDL 88.9 FM. That's it for this AU Neagle News Update. I'm Zach Kopp. And I'm Logan Gay. Thank you for joining us.